Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Ceramic coating giants, Gion, have released a paste wax in a tube. Now the critics are gonna scream, devolution. Um, but I think it's a good idea for them to be releasing this. In this video, we're gonna be comparing this new fluorine-based, hydrophobic, smooth wax in a tube with some of my favorite products, um, Built Hamber Double Speed, and Auto Glim High Definition Paste Wax, which both make it onto my shelf in my garage of products, which I actually kind of, you know, not just review, but I keep and use. So hopefully we can get an idea of just how good this new product from Gion is. Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Guys, before we get started, as always, please consider hitting the subscribe and the bell button if you like detailing content, because this will properly notify you when we release new stuff. The critics are gonna say, you cannot have your cake and eat it. What do you mean by that, John? You cannot have your cake and eat it. What are you talking about? Now, ceramic coating companies like Gion, and, and all of them, you know, and I'm generalizing here, but generally they tell us that ceramic coatings are superior, they last longer, they use more moderns, inorganic, man-made resins that set hard, last longer, and also contain sort of dirt release or self-cleaning properties. So they're much better than waxes. That, that, you know, and we've heard generally that some people have said waxes don't have good detergent resistance they can soften in the summer they can be greasy to apply um, you know they're solvent carried um, what else they attract dust in the summer when you get the pollen on the surface so the key thing about this is that Gion are saying this wax you could use it as a standalone product or you can put it on top of a ceramic coating that's a very controversial interesting area of discussion for me because if you can if this wax makes a suitable top coat product on top of a ceramic you can only have one perfect protection product if that perfect protection product is the ceramic coating because of all the dirt release characteristics and you know everything we're told then by putting something else on top of it you have to to a certain extent nullify the perfect product underneath it and that argument in my head stands up. So maybe the critics do have a point. That's why these conversations are, I don't to say interesting again, but it's really, that is the interesting thing. Now, um, what the argument against the critics is, in simple layman's terms, not everyone wants to use coatings. And this is the point I made a long time ago in the video saying the trick they all missed, where I referred to the fact that most coaching companies were missing a trick by not offering you something like this particular product here. And I believe that Gion are doing the right thing to offer it. Why 90% finger in the wind of people find ceramics a little bit too involved to apply. And the biggest thing is if you're living with a car with a ceramic coating and it gets scratched or something, you have to have paintwork done. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust the body shop to take it off, no disrespect, because it needs to be polished off really. And you need to know what the body shop are gonna be spraying, where the, if they're gonna be blending in onto other panels. So you might need to all remove it to have paint done and then wait to reapply the ceramic. It's a bit hardcore for me. I also, the biggest reason I don't use ceramics typically is I wanna get at my paint to be able to buff it up, you know, make not get a nice glossy resinous abrasive AOI and a polisher with a soft pad and just whiz over the paint and really gloss it up and then chuck a wax or a sealant on top. That works better for me. With some exceptions, I do like the lightweight ceramic model. I think if you put a lightweight ceramic on at the start of winter, you can maintain your car with the nice spray and rinse products. That's a good thing that works for me as well. That's a little foreword about the about the whole concept of a ceramic company introducing a wax and the drama around that and i think i think it's an interesting discussion the truth is you can make your mind up the real cynical people will be going nuts about this saying well it's a wax you know they can't sell us a wax most people will be looking at it thinking yeah i want to give this a go so let's get stuck in with the test 
Okay, let's start with cost, guys. The Gion Wax costs £32 for 175 grams, which translates roughly as £18 per 100 grams. So cost, £18 per 100 Gs. Correct me if I'm wrong with these maths. Next up, Built Hamber Double Speed Wax costs £14.99 for 250 grams, I believe. Or is it 200 grams? Don't know. <laughs> Could get that wrong, but it's roughly £6 per 100 grams. I think I'm correct. Big difference in price per 100 grams. The Auto Glim Wax you can buy for £55 in Halfords and you get 120 grams. So that creates a cost per 100 grams of £46. A hundred gram. So six pounds for this, 18 pounds for this, 46 pounds for this as a comparative price, not factoring in durability. It gets too complicated then, we do that later on. So let's go with three points for Built Hamber, two points for Gion, and one point for Auto Glim. Yes, the Auto Glim Ultra High Definition Wax is a relatively expensive wax. Yes, Built Hamber Double Speed is a very affordable wax. Gion is somewhere in the middle, and I think they've priced it just about right. Would I pay £32 for it? Yes, I would. Next up, overall application and removal, guys. First up, the Gion wax. It's not the oiliest wax to spread, but it's still a light wax. Goes over the panel, no problems. This wax is a peach to buff, I use that word, it buffs up beautifully. There is one disadvantage, that you have to leave this product on the panel for half an hour. But you'd expect after half an hour for it to have gone quite dry and hard, it isn't. It's still sil silky and smooth to buff off the panel. So really nice wax to use this is, guys. I'd give it like an eight out of 10 on application. It loses one mark for not being buttery smooth when, you, when, you, when you're trying to spread it out, but it's still fine. And it loses one mark for having a 30 minute recommended cure time before buffing. That will cause some professionals some problems when they want to get it off. But really, really nice wax to work with. Next up, application, Built Hamber Double Speed Wax. I know this product inside and out. I've used it quite a lot of times, it's my second tub. Um, now, spreading. This product is actually, in my opinion, the easiest to spread of the three products, the most oily. However, the downside is if you put too much wax on, your film of wax that dries is too thick, it can be very sticky to buff this product. So it just requires a little bit more care. Being aware of that and knowing the tricks, using less or using a damp applicator, um, you know, just a little bit of care. But people do complain about this being a sticky wax. The Finny Wax is smoother to buff than this product, okay? There's another downside with the double speed wax that I haven't had with the Built Hamber Finny Wax, and that is in humid, hot conditions. You can get a bit of ghosting from this product, especially in my garage, where I get a film of moisture over all my cabinets and stuff like that. So be careful about using this in humid conditions as well, and that's on the Built Hamber site and described as a characteristic of T1 Carnuba. Some people call it ghosting. So for those reasons, I'm gonna rate this a six and a half out of 10 on overall applications. If you're aware of all these little things, then you can mitigate those risks. If you're not, they can catch you out. Next up on the application, Auto Glim High Definition Wax. This is, it's not as oily when you spread it over the panel as the Built Hamber. You definitely want to be using the damp applicator trick with this. I say definitely, you don't have to, but it does help. The thing about this wax is even if you stick it on really thick and you use too much, you know, whatever, you let it cure for, for too long, it is always easy to remove. This is one of the nicest products to buff, one of the nicest waxes to buff that I've used. And I think it's a really clever formulation. Um, so the only downside is it's not buttery smooth to lay down. So I think, I think I'm think i gonna give this a nine out of 10 to work with. It just loses one mark for me. If you put too much on, you can get a little bit of powdery residue, 
um, as well. But it'd be robbery if I didn't. It's the nicest of the three to work with, I think. So it's a nine out of 10 on how that product is to use. So let's just score that up. That gets the full marks, the three, the Geon gets the two, and the built hammer gets the one. So that's the application covered. Next up, the forensic slickness test. You've seen this before, guys. We do some tilt testing. I use magic erasers and I use some ceramic blocks with suede applicators. I repeat the test. I swap things around. Uh, it's not that scientific because the panel is curved, so there's gonna be different angles. You know, you'd really need a flat test panel that's big. I will get one of those made up as well so I can do this test a little bit more accurately. I also wipe them with a clean microfiber and try and feel how slick it feels under the microfiber and the back of my hand. I'm trying to feel, people like slick products and so do I, that's why I do this particular test. It's not that important, but I'm having a go and this is my order of slickness, but take it with an absolute pinch of salt because they all feel really nice. In fact, the Geon wax feels amazing, but this is my rating. This was the slickest, this was the second, and this was the third. There we go. Next up, hydrophobidity, the study of beads. <laughs> you know what this is, guys. This is a bit of fun. If you like a hydrophobic product, we put them on, we let it cure, and we measure them. And I've got a good eye for doing that. I've got my little way of doing it. That is, I like to put a stream of water onto the panel and drop, drop it down and measure the speed that it flies down. I do look at the beadage and the contact angles, but that can be, that can really vary and that can be too hard to spot or misleading. It's looking at the repellency that, that is the best way of doing it. Trust me, I've been doing this for years. I've been making my own waxes, measuring their hydrophobidity. And this is my attempt on the order of hydrophobicity. The first thing to say is all three of these products are ridiculously hydrophobic, and I mean that. They are ridiculously hydrophobic waxes. But this is my ranking. The most hydrophobic on application is the Geon. Second and third, I'm gonna do as a joint between Built Hamber and Double Speed. I cannot tell the difference, they're both insane. Gion are using fluorine in this wax mix, this wax blend. Fluorine, when I researched my waxes, I had a little table of all these materials that you could put into waxes because of high contact angles. You know, Carnuba, for example, I think has 105. No, no, Carnuba, I think, might be. I've forgotten. <laughs> About four years ago. Carnuba, I think, is 105. No, it's not. Carnuba is about 90 degree contact angle to water. It's not that hydrophobic, but well, it's reasonably hydrophobic. So if you have a pure Carnuba blend, you're not gonna have a massive beading wax. On my table, the top thing was fluorine, which yields 120 degree contact angle to wax. And I think the next thing down was PTFE, um, which is a f form of fluoropolymer, typically when it's used in waxes. And I think that was 115 degrees. So fluorine is one of the most hydrophobic materials you could ever incorporate into a wax blend. And this, this product just hurls the water off and has really juicy beads, it's lovely. So if you're a bead monster, this Gion product is perhaps the most hydrophobic wax I've ever seen in five years of testing and making hundreds and hundreds of wax products. So that is bead-tastic. <laughs> Next up guys, durability testing. Now, there's no substitute for putting these products on a car. You know, even if it's your hood, split your hood up and test them there and just wash your car normally, test them for six months. But unfortunately, when you do video reviews, I've got to get this video review out when the product's released or it's pointless, you know. Six months later, there's 10,000 reviews online. So you have to do an inferred durability test where we take our test panel and we wash it down. And we're gonna use a slightly more powerful water-based degreaser to wash the panel using a soft sponge, just washing it down, trying to be consistent with what we do. Take a time lapse and show you the degradation of these products over all these different wash cycles with the Surfex HD. Yes, we could use a pH neutral mild shampoo, but it's just gonna slow the test down. So this is an inferred durability test with lots of limitations. Real durability can be so, 
so variable depending on how you maintain your car, whether it's kept inside or in a garage, how you wash it, how you scrub it and stuff like that. So if you want to get the most out of these products, look after them and maintain them the way the manufacturers tell you, etc., etc. <laughs> Guys, there was a clear, clear first place, clear second place and clear third place. The product that was affected the most by each pass you know, of the um, all-purpose cleaner was the Geon. So this product demonstrated the worst durability in this simulation. The next product, Autoglim UHD, came second. I will show you the results, the comparative results, after X amounts of sets. I actually lost count, so I'll put a little timer up. I'll put a little counter up. Um, I think I did somewhere in the region of 10 passes with the detergent. And then after that, what I did was I put the film of product out. I thought, rather than just keep rinsing this off, going again, just leave it on there for 20 minutes, wipe it off, do the water test and show you the results. And I'll overlay that footage so you can see the clear difference. Autoglim UHD has tested well in, in, in the past and it was still going strong, but there was a bigger degradation between it and double speed, which was close close to being unaffected it was still zinging it was still beading it was still rapid repellency um so that fared the best and i'll just let the overlays do the talking guys rather than me prattle on so gloss testing guys i don't want to say take this with a pinch of salt but what i want to say is gloss testing on high gloss is not accurate or it's it can be thrown by just one bad reading when you're taking five reading averages. Um, what I need to do is create a test panel that has very low gloss, perhaps around 40 units, so that the products can actually put loads of gloss onto a poor panel. By putting loads of gloss on it means that the amount of gloss we're measuring is more meaningful. This is something I've been meaning to talk about and do on the channel. And we will do it. But for the time being, just take this for what it is. And this is m measuring five tests on high gloss panels and giving you the average results. So the 20 degree gloss averages were 92.7, 91.1 and 90.9. Really, the R specs as well. You want this to be high, this number, 84.8. 83.7, 83.1, that's so damn close, that's virtually irrelevant, even the glosses are, are close. And the log haze, it's like the clarity of the paintwork, 11.1, 10.7, uh, 14.7. This panel is quite opaque, it needs, to, needs a fine polish that panel generally just to get it really really sharp I think I used a single stage on it to just scrub scrub off whatever was on there from before so um, really guys the best results here are Gion if you look at those that data followed by built hamber slightly higher followed by auto glim but so close um, take that with a pinch of salt and we're going to be working on improving our test methods for gloss testing. There are more considerations that when you lower the gloss, the impact you have from the products is more created through filling and re-leveling, I think. So anyway, let's not prattle on about too, too much. Let's go to the overall results of this particular test. Overall results, guys, and overall points. Well, the Geon product picked up 12 points. The Autoglim product picked up 12 points. And the Built Hamber product picked up 13 points, the most, and it's the winner. Now, it's quite speculative, this. I could have broke wind, as a polite way of saying that, and disturbed one of my tests, and maybe one of the things would have slid down the panel a bit quicker, and it would have lost a point, and another one would have won. So it's quite close, very speculative. I'm using this as a way to help me learn a little bit about the Geon product, and it's done that. Built Hamber products should probably win this particular test and get the overall recommendation simply because of the fantastic price. So even if you're a cynic or even if you try this Built Hamber product and you hate it, well, it's cost you £6 per 100 grams. So it's very affordable. 
Um, but it, I think it's actually a really good wax with the only Achilles heel that it's a little bit sticky if you put too much on. We've talked about that anyway. The purpose of this video is really more to talk about this Gion wax. Should you rush out there and buy this Gion wax? Well, if you've got loads of pots of wax and you're happy with them, then no, and that caveat applies to any product I review. Only go and buy something if you wanna try it. This Gion wax for me, the most important thing about it is that it's nice to work with. You can lay it out, you can leave it for as long as you like. You can go and do something else and come back and it will still buff off the panel nice. It is extremely hydrophobic. That is its ace card. So if you love beading, you love maintaining your beads and you like laying out waxes and buffing them, then I think you should have a look at this product. I think you should go and try it. Is it gonna make it over to my shelf? In theory, it shouldn't because these products are very similar. You know, they, they bead as well, not quite as beady, but you know what I mean. But this is going over to my shelf. Why? Because I have a little range of Gion products over there already. I have my wet coat, I have my Gion de detailer and I'll just tuck this behind them. And then if I wanna wax my car, I might pick this particular wax and then I might maintain the wax with the wet coat and this Gion detailer. I'm going Gion Tastic and using three Gion products, but I do like to, you know, I do like to use the systems. So I'm impressed with this. It's making it to my shelf. This gives you hopefully some information that's vaguely useful about those products. I hope you like the review. I'm gonna be using this a lot more and just testing it normally without the cameras rolling, without trying to pitch it up against things and just, just enjoying the product as well, which is what it's all about. And that's important for me as well. So uh, thank you very much for watching guys. Let me know in the comments your thoughts about this review. Let me know your comments about this. You're allowed to say negative things about products, believe it or not. Brands read it, they like it, they can take criticism, but just remember it's a car detailing product, guys. It's not, you know, this is not a COVID vaccine. This is not a um, rocket ship that's gonna take us to Mars and advance the human race. This is supposed to be fun. So keep it sensible, keep your comments nice. And um, I like this product. Thank you for watching, see you soon.